The law of the land is the law. What does this concept mean? To Jews, this concept has special significance and meaning. It means that it is also Jewish law or halacha. Jews who believe in the Torah must follow Jewish law. The Bible forbids the consumption of non-kosher food, for example, pork, lobster, shrimp. These are all forbidden foods. By the same token, Jewish law forbids stealing or causing others financial or emotional pain. Jewish law also states that one must follow the law of the land. This is found in the Talmud as well as in the code of Jewish law called the Shulchan Aruch. Indeed, it is cited in the Talmud in 25 places. In Hebrew, the concept is called Dina de Machusa Dina. Jewish law can be divided into three categories. Category one are activities that are forbidden by biblical decree. Category two are activities that are forbidden by decree of the great rabbinic leaders. Finally, there are activities that are forbidden by Jewish custom. To which of these three categories does the concept of the law of the land is also Jewish law apply to? Is it a biblically derived concept or is it a rabbinic enactment? This is actually a debate among scholars. The author of the Be'i Shmuel, a famous commentary on the Shulchan Aruch, writes that it is rabbinic law, no different than the observance of Hanukkah or Purim. The author of the Chsam Sofer and the author of the Avnei Miluim both write that it is actually a Torah law. Regardless, Jewish law strictly forbids violating the laws of the land. But why? What is the reasoning behind the idea that following the law of the land is also Jewish law? Throughout the years, there have been a number of explanations that have been suggested in answer to this question. Rabbi Isser Zalman Meltzer explains as follows. The Talmud tells us that long, long ago, the descendants of Noah were given seven primary laws of which all of mankind must follow. They are called the seven Noahide laws. One of these seven laws was to establish a system of justice, a system of law and order. During this time, governments were empowered to make laws and ordinances in which to benefit society. Undermining these laws, undermining God's plan for the benefit and welfare of society itself was strictly forbidden. These Noahide laws are referred to by society in general as natural law. Consider the following. After the Second World War, the Nazis were defeated and the Allied forces held a trial of the Nazi leaders at Nuremberg. One may ask, on what basis was this trial held? Did the Nazis violate German law? Were the victims of the Nazi genocide afforded the right to life and liberty under Nazi law? The answer is that they were not. The Nazis specifically issued laws that allowed them to perform these killings, these murders. If that is the case, then upon what basis were these Nazi criminals tried? The answer to this question is that there is a higher moral law that is called natural law. Natural law forms the basis of all human society. It forbids the murder of innocent people. It forbids stealing the money of others, and it gives governments a legal mandate to create and enforce laws. Societal laws apply to all people, and no one is above them. It applies to businessmen, educators, doctors, lawyers, judges, and police officers as well. The laws of a society must be respected by all people 
of all religions. The laws of a democratic society especially are designed to improve and benefit its constituents. There are laws, for example, about building codes. In the United States, buildings must be earthquake safe. Politicians are elected based upon the record of which laws they helped pass. It is no wonder that when an earthquake happens here in the United States, there is very little loss of life. When an earthquake happened in a society without laws that benefit its people, there is far greater devastation. Following the law of the land and being careful to do so is a concept that lies within the very fabric of the welfare of our society. It is no wonder that it is also Jewish law.